Welcome to the October Hero C podcast from Hero Central Studio, also presented on YouTube by Hero Central TV. This is Jason Bullock, your host, coming to you with some updated information on the arts and festivals and crafts and events and writings and social medias and blah, 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 blah. It's the same thing we go through every month from Hero Central Studio. Just teasing everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate that. Um, we are going to jump right into it. We do have another field report from the end of September's Atlanta, Anime, Anime Week in Atlanta 2015 event. Um, Leslie Bullock will be actually presenting that at the end of the segment. Um, so we want to thank her in advance. Um, so we're going to jump right in, okay? Um, according to all of our previous episodes, again, we cover five areas dealing with um, the industry. Character, comics, creativity, connections, and culture. Um, so let's jump right into a few new, uh, news items. Specifically, the Hero Central Studio newsletter is now available for download from um, our sites. Uh, that is actually over at HeroCentral.org. I'll give out the actual download website link in just a moment. Focusing on elements of this past uh, weekend of the 1st through the 4th of October was the Atlanta Game Fest. And then Disney, um, this weekend, the 7th through the 11th, um, they're actually having Disney on Ice, which is mentioned there also in special events on the actual newsletter. Um, coming up, though, is the Atlanta Comic Convention on the 18th of October there off Claremont Road on Exit 91, which we will be attending. So we'll see us on the Tag Us page. Thank you, Wes Tellender, for putting up another great show with awesome artists and writers as well as a great vendor venue for that Sunday the 18th uh, from 11 a.m. till 5 p.m. Come check us out at our table. We have several new books coming out as well which uh, we'll be focusing on our um, Hero Central Universe 2 or HCU 2 preview which deals with the Space Saga half of our Hero Central Universe stories um, that's going to be out now it debuted at AWA so we're going to be presenting more of them at ACC here locally in Atlanta also coming up in Atlanta is the Monty Python reunion tour of Eric Idle and John Cleese on the 22nd um, at the Cobb Energy Gallery Center called Together Again. So you definitely want to follow up on there on the website. You can just Google that information. Um, then we also have an awesome, awesome note here that was fan submitted that the 24th of October uh, will be the Kite Festival here in Atlanta. So you want to check that out. That's going to be a great thing. Um, a couple new elements also to uh, focus on. There are some uh, new book leads we're talking about in our section for connections um, that you're gonna we're gonna mention the reviews of three books. Um, Sci-fi fans will just love this. Um, also, Marvel's Agents of Shields has started a new season. Um, definitely for all those spoiler alerts out there. Yes, the Inhumans have started. They uh, contr contribute to the content continuity of the movies out, including from. If not with Age of Ultron, um, we get to see a new brand of superhuman um, in the stories. So I think it's coming to compete with Heroes Reborn quite a bit, actually. Uh, social media elements. There's a great link at over at BBC.com that I think you need to really check out. There's a listing of videos, including the Eleanor McNair's um, iconic Photos reconstructed in Plato. Um, Life-size photographs have been reconstructed by this artist sculptor in actual Plato, and it's it's amazing to look at these things. That website link is bbc.com/news/entertainment-arts. Again, check out that video. Um, they usually have a lot of great entertainment videos. Also posted on um, this last couple of months, well, well, actually all the way back to uh, July of 2014, was how to make your own morph video. Um, August of 2015, Kirigami, you know, cutting film scenes from paper. That was a great video. Um, April the 15th, though, drawing a true Victorian superhero. That was an amazing effect. Um, 
of a period piece character design and technique. You want to check that out. Um, and then you got some crazy things. Um, even like August 4, 2014, there's a video of news item um, of the man who records all of his sneezes. So you really have no idea what's going to come up on that particular side. Okay, here we are. We're going to talk about our first area, and that is characters. So, let's jump right into the comic movie performances. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just alerted that I did not give you the actual link to the Hero Central newsletter. That is www.herocentral.org backslash capital H C S C A L underscore capital O C T 2015 PDF. You can definitely get that from there. And if you have any questions, you can always email us directly at Hero Central Studio at gmail.com and we'll send that link to you directly. Thank you, Staff Monkey. We appreciate that. Okay, on to comic movie performances. Uh, we're actually talking about the 10 best comic book based movie performances of all time. Um, you know, you've got these awesome roles like. James Spader, who played Ultron and is the villain in Avengers Age of Ultron, he, you know, he follows in line with Tom Hiddleston, who played Loki. I mean, those were just some amazing performances, you know, of people that you would never really expect, but now you could never see anyone else in that role. Um, that's the kind of, of over-the-top acting that we're talking about as far as these performances. Um, so just you tell me what you think, okay? Let's see here. We start out with Chris Evans and Jensen. Um, he basically, you know, as Captain America, the first Avenger. You know, I think he had already established himself, you know, as Johnny Storm in the Fantastic Four re movie release, the first, you know, one from uh, Marvel Studios, and he was great. He played that character as a freewheeling character actor, you know, in, in Johnny Storm. But Chris Evans really tackled an awesome, true-to-earth 1950s, you know, Captain America and a man out of time. So he played true to life, and, then, and it carried over into the productions of Avengers as well as of, you know, the new upcoming Avengers 2, which came out. Um, and now we're going to see him perform possibly in the Civil War in the next Captain America movie. So I think he's done a great performance. Um, listed then next was... Anne Hathaway, who played Selena Kyle, you know, Catwoman. Um, she definitely surpassed Halle Berry in performances of, as Catwoman in the 2004 release. Um, but that was, you know, I shouldn't have even taught that, thought about that, but that she was much better actor, actress for this part. Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker's Spider-Man. You know, he's kind of on the fence with that. I mean, he was more of the teen side to Peter Parker. And more of a, a lanky teenager type character when he portrayed that role than I would say Tobey Maguire. But I don't know. He, he just he took it over the top, and I think he could really make that work in any part that he plays. So um, kudos to Andrew Garfield. Then there was Chloe Grace Moretz who played Hit Girl. Um, you know, she's a prime example of pop culture ridiculousness. So over the top and unbelievably foul mouthed blood-soaked, murder-crazy, preteen vigilante. It was just, you know, beyond anything that Nick Cage could have put together on that. But, you know, it that character was so outrageous, she nailed it. She really did. Again, I mentioned Tom Hiddleston as Loki. I really could never see anybody else playing Loki other than him in that part. Um, not only is he, you know, a pronounced British, an accomplished British actor, um, he has set the tone for the movies when he played Loki and Thor, as well as the return in the second Thor movie, and then the Avengers as their opponent. Um, so you go, Mr. Hiddleston. You, you drive that Jaguar in those commercials. That's pretty amazing. Now, I have to say, here's my favorite one. Really, really is my favorite personal one. And that's J.K. Simmons, who played J. Jonah Jameson in Spider-Man movies. He nailed that character more with better finesse. 
and better performance and accomplishment, in my opinion, than anybody else ever tried, right down to the demeanor, the language, the attitude. Um, he truly makes you believe that he is an editor and knows the difference between what is libel and slander in one commanding jest, yet ever seeking out to reveal a Spider-Man demeaning and delying and deceiving the public, but he still has a heart um, beneath that gruff exterior. So thank you, Mr. Simmons, for putting together an awesome performance. Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, really, he, he, he's done a great job, but um, I think everyone has come to the point where they've lived through enough of the Wolverine movies, but no one else could perform that, even from the X-Men, um, in the Wolverine Origins, or even if they decide to actually do Old Man Logan, you know, and, and let that be the you know the last one. Um, but he has definitely set the bar for that character. Claws, Boner Steel, as Weapon X, and the side, you know, the side mutton chops to match. The next one would be Gary Oldman as Commissioner Gordon. Again, another performance piece of heart, where he took that role, and really after doing Tinker. Taylor Soldier, I think that's the name of it. It was the British spy thriller from the uh, the Cold War. Um, he just rolled that right into James Gordon on the big screen, and uh, it really was a, a dynamic performance. But then, of course, you have to say Robert Downey Jr. did an awesome job playing Tony Stark in Iron Man. Not only did we believe at first you know, that he was like the ultimate example from fanboys because he was in such of an ill repute of his own reputation as a playboy drinking alcoholic, you know, philanderer. You know, it's like perfect. That's exactly what they needed. But he cleaned up his act in, in society and was able to keep the moral.